Welcome back to Robot Odyssey, and yes, this is the DOS version of the game again, which I'm going to do the tutorials in. This time we are scheduled for a tutorial on robot wiring, so here we go. Let's do the robot wiring tutorial, this should be fun. And I'm going to turn off the remote control. Okay, robot wiring. The robots in the Robotropolis sewer are pre-wired to work for you. In the subway and higher levels of Robotropolis, you need to change the wiring. Here you'll find out how to wire a robot. Great, I can't wait. I'm excited. Are you excited? You should be. The wiring inside a robot makes it move, pick up objects, and send signals. This wiring is called a circuit. To create a circuit in a robot, you solder wires to the inputs and outputs of various robot parts. This is an input. This uh, kind of line with a circle coming off it is an input. Go inside scanner and look for all the inputs. You will see them on the four thrusters, the grabber control, and the antenna control. Take scanner with you. Yep, let's step inside scanner for a moment. And, yeah, the game didn't lie to us. All the four thrusters, which remember are these triangle shapes, uh, all the four thrusters are inputs, and up here the antenna and the grabber both have inputs. There you go. Those are the standard inputs on all the robots in the game. Take scanner with us. This is an output, that arrow uh, on a line. Inside the robot, you will see outputs on the grabber control, the four bumpers, and the antenna control. When a robot part is activated, electricity flows out of its output. Take scanner with you. And yeah, just to confirm, yes indeed, the, uh, the four bumpers, like this one here, all have outputs. And the antenna and the grabber have outputs of their own. Okay, simple enough, right? Move scanner so one bumper just touches a wall. Be sure the remote control is on. Uh, I'm gonna move so that that bumper touches that wall. And I'm gonna turn on the remote control. You might have heard a little beep. That's the bumper turning on. The robot squawks and the outside bumper turns orange. Go inside and look at the output for that bumper. It is also orange. Electricity is flowing out of its output. And indeed, such is the case. See, this uh, this output from this bumper has lit up, whereas the other ones, like this one, are still white, meaning they're turned off. Leave scanner here. Okay. The solder pen is used to wire outputs to inputs. Press S to become the solder pen. There we go, we're the solder pen, the soldering iron. And the tip, as you can see, is that white dot in the lower left of the solder pen. Move the solder pen to the input until the tip glows orange. Okay, the input is this thing here. I'm going to baby step the soldering iron. And there we go, now the tip is, uh, I'd call that more like purple, but oh well. Press space bar or button to begin soldering. I'll press space bar. There we go. Move the solder pen to the output. A wire will follow you. Hey, check it out. See, there's a wire following my uh, my soldering iron around now. Uh, when the tip glows orange, press spacebar to connect the wire. So yeah, I'll wire it to this. And there we go. And the wire is purple because the output is purple. The output is active and it's sending electricity now into this uh, that input there. It is easy to disconnect a wire. Move the tip of the solder pen to either the input or output. Press space bar or button when the tip glows orange. So basically, move the soldering iron until you see the tip change color and just press space bar. The wiring is undone. Now you're ready to create a circuit in a robot. Press C to use the cursor again. Okay, I become this little person. Take Sparky with you through the next few rooms to make a wall-hugging robot. Press S to use the solder pen again. Okay, I think I need to drop the robot first. Press S. Go inside Sparky and connect the left thruster marked A to the bottom bumper marked B. Be sure the remote control and robot thruster switch are on. Okay. I'm going to leave the remote control off for just a second until I finish that wiring job. But uh, So basically we want to connect A to B. For this tutorial, they're marked for us. Yeah, see? A connects to B like so. And the thruster switch over there is on already. So I'm going to turn on the remote control. Hmm, nothing happens. Perhaps there is something else we need to do. Ah yes, place Sparky next to the bottom wall so its bumper just touches the wall. When the bumper touches the wall, electricity flows from the bumper to the thruster, propelling the robot. Okay, let's test out this theory then. I'm going to, uh, oops going to position myself so I can move Sparky just like so, so the bumper is touching the wall. And now I'll turn on the remote control. And Sparky goes, because the left thruster is connected to the bottom bumper. So when the bottom bumper activates, 
the left thruster activates as well. So far, so good. When the left thruster is on, Sparky moves to the right. The thruster pushes the robot in the opposite direction. What will happen when the right thruster is on? Well, obviously, then the robot will move to the left. So, yeah, whatever side of the thruster you turn on, the robot will move away from that direction. Sparky stops at the right wall. To make Sparky move up... Yeah, let's test this theory out. Oh, Sparky didn't stop because... Uh, Sparky stopped moving because his bumper isn't touching the wall anymore, so let's do this. And Sparky stops because he hit the wall. To make Sparky move up, connect a wire between the bottom thruster C and the right bumper D. Now, since Sparky is touching the right wall, electricity flows into the bottom thruster and Sparky moves up. Right, we are. So, connect C to D, which is um, this connected to that. That wire is a little ugly, but um, the game will tell us later how to make prettier looking wires. And Sparky moves up because his bottom thruster activated and he moved off the screen, so I'm going to follow him. The wire between C and D is hard to see. Disconnect it and reconnect it, only this time start your wire at D, the bumper. The wire from your first connection always runs horizontally. Remember this to make clearer looking circuits. Yeah, take that to heart, because when you start making more complicated circuits in the game, you want them to be kind of legible, as in real life. In real life, if you're drawing a circuit schematic, it needs to uh, needs to be readable, because part of the point of making a schematic is so that people can look at it and figure out what's going on. So I'm going to undo this connection. And as the game said, see, if you start from C, the first line is always... Uh, the starting point always produces a horizontal line. So if you go from C to D like this, it looks bad. But if you start from D, then it will do more along the lines of what you want to do. It will look like that. And there you go. That looks a little bit more sensible, doesn't it?